CES MMA 45 is coming up on August the 11th, and I am now joined by one of the men who fighting for the interim featherweight title, Saul Almeida. He takes on Pedro Gonzalez. Saul, as always, I appreciate the time. This fight does seem to come together pretty quickly. So uh, when did you actually find out about this matchup? Um, Maybe about a couple weeks ago. I was looking to fight on the next August card, and... They presented the name and the opportunity, so, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity, so I, t- I took it. At first, I wanted to to maybe have that fight at lightweight, because mm-hmm. I was like, I will only fight a featherweight if it makes sense, if it's like, you know, if it's a contender fight, if, it, if the next fight is for the belt, and then uh, they told me it would actually be for an interim title. So I was like, great. So and of course, we... this fight coming up here, I was, when I knew I was going to talk to you, I thought one of the things, and people can see you wearing the, the money team hat there, are you, are you ever concerned that people will always, when they hear your name, they will just think of you as Jose Aldo's translator on the world tour as opposed to a guy that's been fighting for a long time? I mean, people can think what they want. I mean, if it's if I'm out there, then you know I don't care if it's good or bad. You know, if at least people are talking about it. But uh, I think it's gotten a, a little away from that. Like before, that's what it was. But now, uh, now it's you know I think we've gotten past that. But people that people still still say that. Oh, I remember you from here, from there. So I mean, it was still cool. I, I don't regret anything. Do you ultimately think that that, at the end of the day, kind of helped your career out because people may not have known who you were before that world tour, but then all of a sudden they're like, hey, you know, let me let me uh, Google this guy. Let me see when, when he fights. Do you, do you kind of look at that, the positive aspects of it? Oh, absolutely. I'll do it again in a heartbeat. Uh, everything about it was, was awesome. It was great. You know, you, you get to travel on – one of the big probably the biggest fight in the UFC history and do a world tour with with both fighters you know one being my friend Aldo but still I don't regret anything everything was good everything was fun and I think it it helped my career I didn't do it at the time thinking that you know I did it because when Aldo was in Boston he asked for me to help him out so that's my intention was just you know helping him out and doing all the interviews and going along but, you know, if you can kill two birds with one stone, why not? Of course, you're, you're coming off that win back in March against Josh LeBurge. I had, had did snap a, a three-fight losing streak. Uh, did, did you ultimately make any, any changes, um, you know, leading into that fight with Josh that, uh, you know, maybe in the matchup you thought really played out and, and really showed uh, kind of how you evolved as a martial artist? A little bit. Uh, I I did. Uh, I trained a little bit more on the ground, like, but specific details, st- stuff that I might have been missing. But uh, at the end of the day, I just think I've had something that it wasn't missing in training, but it was missing in the fight. I've always had that ag- aggressive style and a style that I can fight anywhere and and finish fights. But I just, for some reason, it just wasn't coming out, and I don't know if I was just doing enough to win or just, you know, I, I don't know what, what was going on, but I feel like now I'm hitting like almost like my prime and I'm, it's just every fight from now on is just going to be better uh, and I'm just going to go for it because I know I have the skills for that and, you know, I just see myself, you know, going, going from here and just, you know, taking this belt and then going forward, but just uh, being being a little more aggressive and and just doing what I know I can do, you know. Pedro Gonzalez, the opponent here. I think a lot of CES fans are, are very aware of Pedro. Uh, what what sticks out to you when when you watch him fight and what you believe he does the best? He's he's just a you know he's, he's a tough dude. He's very aggressive, pushes the pace, but. Uh, when you fight me, you're usually on the on the wrong end of 
on that. You know, I don't think he he has the skills to beat me. I don't think he he's gonna push the pace harder than I am. So I just see myself going forward and and just looking to finish at all times. And you know, at the end of the day, it's a fight. So we'll, we'll both get in there, put our shorts on, mouthpiece, and you know, it's a fist fight. We'll see what happens. What's the differences in preparing for a 25-minute fight as opposed to a 15-minute fight? Uh, I'm not sure. I guess just pushing my conditioning a little harder, which that's always my strength, so I, I never have a problem with that. I actually had one, one fight uh, do, go 25 minutes. That was like my seventh fight when I won my first title. So that was a 25 minute fight, and I guess just pushed the, the the cardio a little harder. But besides that, and of course this fight code here, CES MMA 45, uh, Pedro Gonzalez is the opponent here. In, in terms of you mentioned about you know that the the title you won back there, your, your seventh pro fight. What do you remember the most about that night? Uh. I was, I think I was nervous going into that fight. I was like seven and zero going into a, a title fight. It was for XCFL. Uh, they did a few shows, and I was fighting the like the top three ranked guy, Chris Grant Mason, and I was excited mm. for the fight, but also a little nervous, you know. But still uh, confident. Man, I just went in there and went all five rounds, you know. Easy work all, all rounds. You know, at the end of the fight, it seemed like a 10-minute fight, but everything played out perfectly. You're a veteran of a sport. Do you still get nervous at all for fights? I do. I get nervous. I get. I think if you don't get nervous, you, you, you're not doing it right. I mean, you, you get that, <clears throat> those emotions, like, leading up to the fight. Some, some days you, you feel... I don't know, you might feel nervous. The other day you might feel super confident. The other day you might feel, I don't know, just it's a roller coaster of emotions. But at the end of the day, when, when I step in there, I, I, I feel nothing. I just I just go in and, and do what I know I can do. But that, that's a normal feeling, I guess. Talking about the roller coaster of emotions, when you have a bad day in training, how do you make sure that that doesn't carry over to the next day? Uh, I just try to clear my mind, stay positive, uh, forget it, and just move on to a new day. And just sometimes I, I like to watch fights and just see where, where like, I have a goal and that's where I want to get. So I'll think about that and then I'll have a positive mind. Everything is good again. Then I'll be like, I'm, I'm confident. I know I can do this. I know, I, ha I know my skills. I've been doing this for a long time. It's just another day, and everything is good again. A victory here could set up a title unification bout against Matt Bissett. Of course, he's coming off that knockout loss against Hurt Hart Hallbot in the Contender Series. He just had surgery on his thumb. I mean, have you? Do you even allow yourself to think about that potential matchup? Yeah, uh, you know. It's business at the end of the day, but, you know, uh, everything going the way it's supposed to be. I'll take this interim title, and I guess that's that's what's next. You know, I like Matt. I just had breakfast with him in Vegas uh, right after his fight. So, he's a good guy. I like him. Would it be tough to fight Matt since, you know, hey, he's a good guy. You've been around before. Or, or is it your mindset like, look, at the end of the day, we're both fighters. This is what we do, and if I'm the champion, that's you know we we've got we've got to run this fight. Hey, look, if he doesn't want to fight me, he can vacate the belt. If he doesn't vacate the belt, then we got to do what we got to do. And, and of course, you know, there's a lot of, of Northeast guys that are getting on that contender series. Is that all uh, a thought of your prop? Are you thinking about that at all at this point? <laughs> I thought about it. Yeah, I I messaged Sean Shelby. And he told me if there was any openings, he'd, he'd uh, give me a call. So, uh, you know, definitely on that list. But I, I think they're only doing five weeks or four weeks. So, I don't know, but 
I mean, if there is an opening, and he already knows I'm ready. And but of course, CES MMA 45 is up first. Interim title fight against Pedro Gonzalez. Saul, as always, I appreciate the time. And let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media. Uh, Twitter, Saul Almeida. Instagram, Saul underscore Almeida. Facebook, Spider Almeida. Follow me. Keep up. In a month's time, we'll get that belt. One more in the wing column.